Welcome to Lecture Online. In the previous video, we looked at the first type of intermolecular force, which was the force between two dipoles, two polar molecules. In this video, we're going to take a look at the force between ions and dipoles, so ions and polar molecules. Polar molecules are a little bit more positively charged on one end, a little bit more negative charged on the other end, in such a way that the positive end tends to be attracted to negative ions, and the negative end tends to be attracted to positive ions. Of course, they're called anions and cations. And so the intermolecular forces there are strong enough to affect the way these molecules behave in the presence of ions. For example, water molecules are dipole molecules. They have a positive end along the hydrogens and the negative end along the oxygens. And then if you place sodium chloride in water, the water molecules will will take the negative ends of the molecules and force the split between the sodium and the chlorine atoms and surround the sodium atoms and surround the chlorine atoms. Of course, at that point, when you separate them, the chlorine will steal one of the electrons from the sodium and become negatively charged. The sodium will then be minus an electron, become positively charged. So these are now positive and negative ions. And so the polar molecules will then surround them in such a way that the negative ends of the oxygens will be pointed towards the sodium and the positive ends of the hydrogens will then point away from the sodium and completely surround it. There is enough energy locked into these bonds that will actually displace the, the sodium and the chlorine from each other even though those bonds contain 774 kilojoules per mole of bonding energy. Notice that the distance between the oxygen and the sodium is about 240 picometers which causes the energy to be contained within one of those bonds to be 84 kilojoules per mole. So it's a lot less than you'd see within the intramolecular forces, but still fairly significant. The way you can actually calculate that number is to go back to the Coulomb equation, and in order to get the energy between a polar molecule and an ion, you can put in the charge of the ion in the dipole moment of the polar molecule. For water, the dipole moment is 1.87 the by, and so let's go ahead and plug in those numbers and see if we get something that's close to the, the assumed result right there. So we use the K from the electrical equation, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th. That would be Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Um, well, why don't we write down Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Multiply that times the charge in a single uh, sodium ion, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs. Oop. Coulomb should be inside the parentheses. There we go. The um, dipole moment, 1.87 Debye, and the Debye is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 30th Coulomb times meters. And then, uh, of course, if you want to do this for a whole mole, we have to multiply this times Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a... Uh, uh, that number of atoms in a mole and divide that by the distance between them squared, which is 240 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and we have to square that. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is equal to. So we have 9e to the 9th times 1.6e to the 19 minus times 1.87 times 3.33e to the 30 minus times 6.02e to the 23rd divided by 240 e to the 12 minus squared equals, and that's equal to 93,700 joules per mole. And of course, in kilojoules, that would be 93.7 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that we get a number fairly close to the actual measured value. And of course, there are some subtle differences. And so that looks like it's fairly close. Good enough. Um, just to just to wrap this up.